Good evening and welcome to Jakarta, Indonesia. It is FIBA Basketball World Cup. Canada taking on Latvia, uh, excuse me, Group H, game day three. Winner of this game will finish first in Group H. Loser will finish second, we already know that. First up, it's Lapia. Shona Thorburn alongside Mark Clark. Mark, for me, Lapia, the biggest thing is they are missing their captain, their leader, Didis Bertans. We well, know he is out for the tournament. Well, and it's, it's an enormous miss. He shot, he's been shooting the ball 70% success on, the, on his games. He's only played a game in a bit, obviously. He was huge in the qualifiers. It's not just his points, his experience, the rotation gets shorter and they're losing their leader. But let's not forget, he only played six minutes against France and they found the way and they didn't, they weren't great against France. They didn't shoot the ball as well as they've been shooting the ball, but they just found the way to win. And they just believe in how they're playing. They believe in each other. And coach Luca Benke does a great job and has led the program and has made this group really believe. 11 and one in the qualifiers unbeaten in the first round yeah they're missing all sorts of people but they've just said hey it doesn't matter what we've got is a group of great guys and they have performed exceptionally well performed is exactly right i think coach banky has done an amazing job with this team for the last couple of years you mentioned it 11 and 0 against some very good european teams can they com continue to play without their captain at such a high level. I know he only played a few minutes, but those were important minutes. Well, Canada, on the other hand, we knew they were gonna be talented heading into this tournament, but they have shown more than just talent. Talk about team basketball, defensive grit, and the joy and sharing on offense that these men are playing with. They already have the FIBA basketball record for assists in a game, 44. Canada looks scary good. Well, and they, they are amazingly well led. You mentioned all the time, this was, was started by coach Nick Nurse, but uh, Jordi Fernandez has come in. The way he talks, his team play the way he talks. The way he talks reflects the way his team play. Yeah. He has got, a superstar and he's got a group and he's got veteran leadership he's got all the component parts and the amazing thing is that they have played team basketball from minute one of that huge win over the world number five team france they are just on a roll moving in the right direction and they believe now they absolutely believe and they should for good reason but guess what there's a six man in the gym all the fans well there it is earlier today lebanon falling to france 79 85 up next canada and latvia for first place in group h and we will see quickly two and oh two and one oh France getting their first win, surprisingly, at this tournament, and Lebanon 0 and 3. We will take a quick break for the playings of the national anthems. For the national anthems, we begin with the anthem of Latvia. standing for the national anthem of Canada.
Well, the exchange and handshakes before we see the third team calling tonight's game. As the referees are coming up, and there they are. Juan Fernandez, the crew chief from Argentina, Jenna Renault from the USA, and Johnny Batista from Puerto Rico will be calling tonight's action. Well, first up, it's Lafia. We talked about them missing their captain, Cyrus Bertrand. You said it, he played all 12 games for them in the qualifiers, but some other people stepped up when he went down. He went down with three, uh, three fouls, but actually it was an injury that kept him out of that big win over France. They still got a lot of star power, though. So they're going to go with uh, Kurix, Schmidt, Brazudis, Kurix, and Zagas. Well, the big thing is Zagas stepped up, player of the game in the win over, over France. <laughs> and uh, now he's got another challenge. There's these numbers from uh, the game against France. 22, 8 from 11, 5 assists. It's the fact that he looked after the ball in probably the biggest pressured game he's played in his career and still delivered his own points and really did run the show for his country. He really has already had a great tournament. And I know that uh, people have talked about Roland Smits for a long, long time, and that there, maybe this is still a breakout tournament for him in terms of how he has looked up there with every country's major players. He's scored, he's really played defense, he's done a great job. And Luca Banki, well, he talked about how much, how much research he did to find out about Latvia in the press conference. That tells you what this, how he conducts himself when he runs his team. He is running a program for a country, and he respects that, and that comes across in the way he deals with his team. Yeah, you said it. He said he had goose goosebumps with all the fans that were in the stands. For such a small com uh, country, I'm surprised they have so many fans, but it is absolutely amazing to see, and they are enjoying every bit of this with the way that their team have been playing and now up canada we talked about it and we will continue to talk about it because boy have they been impressive from the first player to the 12th player but right now it's a starting five we have gilgis alexander powell rj barrett olenic the captain and Dylan Brooks. So this has been their starting five that they've gone with the first two games as well. Well, and I think Dylan Brooks doesn't sometimes get the credit he deserves, the way that he's played really physically and intimidating. He's done an excellent job. But Shakilis Alexander's had all the headlines, <laughs> and he is a genuine all-star. In this tournament, he's looked like he's going to be an all-star. And he really does set the tone for the team. If he's, if he's bought in, everybody's bought in. And he's had two superb games. But don't forget, you need leadership, you need veterans. When they struggled a little bit against France, Kelly Olnick was just absolutely superb in the way that he calmed everything down. He's shooting the ball really well, 15 points a game. Chips in with his assists, chips in with rebounds, and he really does play like the veteran leader that he is. But Jordi, Jordi Fernand is the head coach. You cannot actually underestimate what he's done in his first tournament as a head coach he'll always play this down because he says I've been an assistant I've been on this program and that program but being the main man is a different job and he leads this program really really well and let's not forget he agreed to this job only probably about a month ago now I want to say a little bit more than a month ago so Big shoes to fill in uh, Nick Nurse having to step down. It started with him, but what a hire Canada Basketball did going after Jordi Fernandez, and it is paying dividends as they have looked great. But it's a new game, it's a new day. They have to go up against a very, very good Latvian team who have been playing well for a while now. Yeah, they missed out in the uh, Euro basket, but look at that, they're ranked first. That's a three-point shooting team, 45.7% from three-point range. Well, that's that's the end product of how well they take care of the basketball and how well they move. 44 assists for Canada against Lebanon. That was a World Cup record. You messed, messed, mentioned that earlier on. Canada doing so well in turning their defense 
into points inch off of uh, their defense. But against a team that turns the ball over less than 10 times a game, you know, that's that's really one of the battlegrounds for this game. Will, will Latvia take care of the basketball if they do? Uh, will they get their feet set to take the really high percentage shots they've taken? That'll be the first time Canada have had to work hard for every point they've got. That'll be the first point. Then Latvia have to control the glass. They have to keep Canada off the glass. Canada do a really excellent job, especially in transition, getting after the offensive rebound. The Tiso countdown to tip off. One minute to go. Game to decide who wins the group. I think it's too close to call. But if I had to go one way or another, I'd have to go with the Canadians. They have just been so impressive if they can establish the right tempo. Well, Latvia making history. They've already made history. Can they make more history for their country and their fans? We will find out. Canada, on the other hand, they were there back in 2019. This is a very different looking team. Only two players from the roster in 2019. We know their goal. They have talked about their goal. They got to get through Latvia. They're going to have to get through a couple more games. Hopefully finish top two, but we'll talk a little bit more about that as the game rolls on. One game at a time. That's what Canada are talking about after every win. Let's see if they can do a little bit more magic. Good evening and welcome to the FIBA Basketball World Cup here in Jakarta, Indonesia. It is Latvia taking on the home team Canada as Canada wins the jump ball. And Latvia quickly into a zone on the first possession. They find a Linux, a Linux to Powell to start it off. Hey, what, is, what should you do? Be aggressive, straight down the gut. That Latvian zone's got a hole in its own space. It was just wide open down there. Zagos into Schmitz. Schmitz taking his time. Kurex goes one on one. And not sure if they're going to call it on the pass. Yeah, there's too bad he didn't just try and throw the shot off when the whistle blew because he'd be going to the free throw line right now. And there we see a Linux to Powell. So ball out of bounds. They get it in. Zagas, you talked about his big game against Canada and miscommunication defensively. And he finished hot, and he is starting hot. Wow. Can't leave anyone alone. They have to challenge every single three. Canada with a turnover. A little bit of a miscommunication there. Gonna get a replay of the three, which they just left him alone. No one really understood who was supposed to pick him up, but. The turnover was, I wouldn't say it was caused by the defense. The really the, the easy two was there, they just fumbled it. Lapia now. Schmitz to Kurex. Six seconds on the shot clock, and that three-point shot is good. The scout has to be make him drive and hope the help side is there because this Lapian team can shoot the lights out and we're seeing it early here. They go inside to Powell. Back out to Brooks. Brooks now takes his time and his three-point shot is good. I'm surprised how almost passive at times Canada have been in the first two possessions. Another open look. And you cannot leave them open as coach Fernandez cannot be happy defensively with how his team has started this game as he is out almost halfway onto the court staring at his players saying guys this was not the defensive scout that we asked for you know they're a good three-point shooting team and you've already allowed three three-pointers to go in let's listen in Swing, you got 
Good screen here. If nothing, take it back to the boat. Oh, man. Here we go. Here we go. Get started. Well, we've heard a lot of passion from coaches throughout this tournament, and there we see Brzingis, and man, he was happy, and he is happy, and he's a part of this team. Well, the two of them, Strelnick sitting next yep. to Yanis Strelnick has been a part of this Latvia national team for a number of years. And they wanted to be Absolutely. here. Absolutely. That tells you everything you need it to does. know. It does. They wanted to be here supporting their teammates, their brothers, and I think that's a, a great sign of what kind of a character this Latvian team has. Well, we heard the timeout, sorry for the foul language, but it's an emotional, heated game as Shea beats everyone. And I think Coach Fernandez wanted a foul on that one, but that talks about breaking the press. Zagas, the star of that game against France. And I think they're going to call a hand check. Yeah. We heard in the timeout, <clears throat> uh, Fernandez not too happy. He says, all right, if they drive, I'll accept that. If they go to pull-ups, that's mine. But guys, come on, three three-pointers? Three well, not only three three-pointers, only one was contested. The others were just too open. Well, that one's off the front of the iron, but they come up with a long rebound. Typical for uh, teams that like to shoot threes is Zagas. Tough, oh. tough layup under Kelly Olenek. So great job. Five points for that man already. You know, Canada haven't been broken down very much at all on the board. So far, be it pass or dribble, Latvia have done that. Barrett, SGA, no good. Powell tips it out. Can't hold on to it, though. Latvia comes up with the rebound. They kick it, Schmitz, no one there. Back rim, Barrett with the rebound. Barrett's double teamed. And a rebounding foul is going to be called. Yeah, going Arthur, against Arthur, uh, Kuritz. Arthur's Kuritz. It's crazy. Like, we've always talked about the Bertrands brothers. Now we've got another set of brothers on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> It's genetics, Mark. Yeah. You and I didn't have it. So the Kirks. The Kirks family is going to be an incredibly proud family right now. They're two, two of their sons starting for their national team in front of thousands of traveling fans. Yeah, that's amazing. They get the ball in to Brooks. Kicks it to Olenek. SGA. Got the mismatch. The hesitation, penetration, step back, baseline shot. Rolls out. Nice tip there. And that pass is off the mark. It's the one place they're not going to have joy, right? Through the air, over this defense. There's just too many athletes. Especially as there was no space to play. Everyone was back. So an off-ball foul on Schmitz, I believe. You've got to be aggressive. You know, the way they've started, they've started really confidently out there, but you've got to keep making good decisions, keep looking to get open shots. And you don't have to try and get it in the one great pass. Powell inside. A little shot fakes, ends up drawing the foul. That's going to be the fourth personal, second personal foul, excuse me. Fourth team foul, that's uh... They don't need Roland Smith's no. in foul trouble, that's all. Yeah. You know, they, they come here without two superstars, they lose their captain, and therefore they're not taking it. Smith's has been phenomenal for them. That's not really shook. They, they want that upgraded. Well, let's listen in to the referees. Wow. Okay. We have a possibly a way and formalized foul. Okay, the other, the other side. Okay. My opinion this is a, a normal contact. Try to play the ball, right? Good? I confirm. Confirm? Yep. 
personal yeah. foul uh, and successful uh, head coach challenge. Thank you. Well, you heard, you heard what their interpretation was. was I confirm. A, they were trying to uh, make a normal Two action shot. on the ball. It looked worse because he was coming from over the top. But he did make the action on against, against the basketball, is what the referees have said. Very early to uh, make the challenge. Although, as we found out in the, uh, in the last games, sometimes a more productive challenge on the upgrade of the foul. No worries as Powell knocks down that one and you see the Canadian fans all smiles. They're definitely outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second. Zag out. Defended by Brooks. Brooks now. Two-point shot, no good by Grajulis there. Brooks is doubled, finds Barrett. His three-point shot is good, and that's a good sign. You don't want to say he, he's been cold, but he's had good looks and missed a lot of good shots. And he's become a little frustrated. It's great that he's made the first one. Well, talk about that response, though. <laughs> the coach for that, that's just a simple screen away from the board. They're going to switch. How can he get that that easy? No one has come up open that easy against this Canadian team in the first two games. No. I think they just, uh, they're very smart and they move very well away from the ball. So you always have to be aware, no matter where you're defending someone, right? But it is, it is a straightforward screen action. Someone's got to just bounce into that lane if they're going to switch aggressively. Great execution by Latvia, though. I mean, it's just tremendous angular. I, everything is just so good about it. Well, Latvia now already committed 14 fouls, so Canada's going to be on the free throw line here on out. Five minutes and 20 seconds left in this quarter. Brooks no good. Olenek offensive rebound. And off the mark is his shot as he was looking for a foul. Rajulis to the corner. As we see uh, Davies Bertrand in the game. Bertrand, little shake and bake. Zagas didn't get a shot off, but he finds a shooter, and they got lucky. And this is what I mean. You can't, you gotta be a little bit more uh, foul aware. You can't be that. When you know they're in a the bonus, you can do stuff like that. You can look to see if you can disrupt. But there is no reason when you're in the bonus, in the penalty situation, you want to get involved 20 meters from the basket. You know, it's just a, it's not a very heads up foul. And the one thing that this Latvian team normally is, is very, very heads up. Uh, Canada shooting 73% in the tournament as we see some substitutions. Well, Zorix is coming in, and Zorix, uh, he's another one that's Latvian perimeter cr crew, is, if you want to call him. <laughs> if he's open, he hasn't seen a bad shot. He, when he gets his feet set, he didn't have a great game against France. But he's not going to take bad ones. But when he, if they leave him open, he's another Latvian who will knock down the three. Alexander Walker in the game for Canada. Well, you hear him. They're everywhere. Zorix now spending a lot of time dribbling. Gets it back. Oh, nice little action. And great. It's not really a shot. It's not really a hook shot by uh, Grajulis, but good job. Nice patience by Latvia. That little they push. Look, yeah, it's that yeah. little push. You know what? They, what it, what's so great is that the timing and the quickness, you don't have very, very long to set your defense. Once they have you chasing them, their timing is so good. And especially against a team like Canada who chase, you will get options if you keep the execution really sharp. And no good is that shot, so that was a good contest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 
a great start to the game. Yeah. Both, but for level again. Barrett now. Penetrate, kick, extra pass. Alexander Walker in the corner. I'm not sure if it was blocked. Well, it definitely came out strange. Zagas uses the pick. This is what I mean. They're constantly off ball moving yep. on every action. So you can't fall asleep watching the ball if you're a defender against this Slapian team. Barrett now. And it's going to be an over the back yep. call. See, the Lapians, in terms of the shots, they don't, they don't really judge it. Ultimately, you have to. Don't really judge it by the fact, do I score or do I miss? The way they play, they're going to take that shot. Yeah. It's a good shot. Right. And they have enough players that shoot that, that as we've seen already in this tournament, 45% from the three. So if you're taking that many shots, shooting 45%, you have a great night. You're shooting 55. You have a, an ordinary night, you're still at 40. They don't have post up op great post up yep. options. They have people who can play inside with the right matchup, but they spread the floor and make you chase them. Well, Schmitz, one of their post up options, is on the bench with two fouls, but it's okay because they are doing well without him here in this first quarter. They're leading Canada by four. Skelly gets it out. Bertrand stays baseline. And good job there, reading the defense and drawing the foul as he is going to earn himself a trip to the free throw line. Well, I made it with a foot, ripped it through, went hard, which, you know, you saw the fact that um, Dylan Brooks had to chase him and then just hesitated and drew Brooks into the contact. And if you've watched this Latvian team in the qualifiers, the way that they're playing in this tournament, it's not really a surprise. Do I feel like they're playing, you know, nothing to lose? Yes, a little bit, because they are making history, but they've been playing like this for a while now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this isn't a yeah. fluke. Absolutely, Porzingis only played two games. Scale was it, um, yeah. Strelnix was injured, didn't play all the games. The one miss, though, and obviously Smith was only there for three games. Yeah. The one big miss is, is the captain. Yeah. That's, that's... Played in all 12 all games, 12 right? 12 games, yeah. Olenek blocked, good defense. Lafia don't really have numbers, but they got speed. And strong take by Kurek, no good. So Canada now with their opportunity to run. Alexander Walker, he had his Kelly Olenek on the side. Could have been a nice three-point shot with offensive rebounders, but took it himself. SGA spin move, corner, Brooks, extra pass. And Alexander Walker, no good. Ball back to Lafia. I think the, the only observation that sounds a negative for Canada is they're now, for the first time perhaps, yes. trying to make shots happen for themselves. And they don't need to. The, uh, the sport, uh, the Julius Alexander penetration there to a tough one, as you said, only goes wide open. Earlier in this tournament, he, he was throwing that pass. But they've never been in this situation, Absolutely. and I think this is maybe what happens to younger, inexperienced teams at the FIBA level. As they go inside, Javas, no good. That's a tough shot, but they come up. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Nice hustle there by the big man, number 18, Klavs Javas. Doesn't come up with a rebound, but they got the ball back because of that man. Didn't panic though, didn't he? he got double table treamed as, as he went inside, then he just had to find a pass. They're not good when they have to slow down and try and bang around. They've got to try and keep the floor spread. Well, Zorix, you mentioned it. We've talked about a lot of other guys, but he has come in and played a big, big, important role. Everyone on this Latvian team, to be honest, who, who has played, and that's all of them, have done really, really good jobs. How about this? Easy two-point basket, because no one was back, because Canada put up an early shot. So, Latvia 23 to 12. Canada have never been in this position so far in this tournament. I know it's only their third game, and they talk about getting 1% better every game. They are not doing that here in the first quarter. Well, maybe they got lucky. 
And Olenek is going to go to the free throw line. That's a foul. It's, it's definitely it's a smart foul. move by Olenek, yeah, though, yeah. seeing okay. that he was reaching. Same thing as you always say. He knew that if he went that way, he would get the contact. I don't think it's not the it's not the uh, it's not the 23-12 scoreline that Canada should be worried about. They can score in a hurry, and Latvia are shooting the lights out. The two things is that Latvia are getting too many open looks against a team that is athletic has been switching really aggressively. Straightforward like ball screen, did they not want to switch that? And then the other thing down the other end, it's like their flow because they're not getting, they're not getting enough stops, they can't get to run. It's becoming a little bit looking for stuff, looking for your own thing, trying to, for all the right reasons, trying to make something happen. They've just got to believe that what they've got is a team that can pass and create for yeah. each other. Well, a rare miss by Kelly Olenek at the free throw line. And you know, Canada is not a team. Like, if you're a little bit more patient and don't try and create one on one on your own early, you're going to get something late at the end of a shot clock. Oh, because yeah, they that, do have yeah. people who can break people down, oh, right? Oh, absolutely right. Down the end of the clock, they're probably as talented as any team in the World Cup. Davis, Bertrand. Nice defense here by Canada. That's a great, great defensive effort there by Edgem, who just checked in along with Bell Haynes. What a, what a first half he had the other day. Four for four from the three-point line. I'll tell you what I love about this as well from Coach Fernandez is that, okay, some of you guys aren't playing as well as they have played so far. Bell Haynes showed, Edgem we know about anyway. Scrubs in there because they played well in the last game. You guys haven't done what we said we were going to do. Let's have a look. Let's yeah. have a look. Yeah. You and just, let's sit here and think about it a little bit. Well, look at this. He's kind of gone. Coach Fernandez. Bell Haynes. Fancy ball handling. Almost loses it. Gets it to Scrub. Scrub. No good. He's gone with a sort of European yeah, lineup. Absolutely. Because oh, yeah. these guys have, you know, minus Olenek, these guys have a lot of European experience. Oh, oh Olenek says not here. Not tonight. Well, Canada are going to take the last shot as there are 15 seconds on the game clock. Alexander Walker, Bell Haynes caught it awkwardly. No good. Scrub is the tip in was after the game clock expired. So a big half here for Latvia. Expected or unexpected, we're not sure as they lead Canada 23 to 13 after 10. But if you're Latvian, there's plenty of Latvian fans here. I don't really know how many people are left in Riga. You, would, you, could, you couldn't have dreamt of a 23 to 21st quarter start. Numbers wise, Canada two for 10 from three. Obviously, Latvia up there at 50%, but that, don't that, they only took 10 threes. It wasn't like they were just coming down and just taking threes, got to the basket, but they spread the floor. And I was just, I'm surprised. Almost Canada giving Latvia a little bit of respect, and then they lose that defensive coming over screens in particular. Ball screen, I wouldn't have expected that to see a wide open uh, guard shot off a of pick and roll because Canada has been switching it aggressively or getting over the top. Hey, I don't know, no one should panic on that Canadian lineup. They, they should refocus, remind themselves about chasing them off the three point line. Start sharing the ball, get some stops, get it in, get some things happening in transition. Because the one thing we know about this Canadian team, they can score in a hurry. They really can generate a lot of offense from their defense. It's just going to take them longer against a better team like Latvia uh, and the way that they're playing. So, as we said right before the game, this is a great game for Canada to find out a little bit more about themselves. And for us watching, so are they a genuine contender? Are they still moving that way? They've done so well last time. You want to get all the details of this and download all the World Cup action. Courtside 1891, not just the World Cup, all international basketball. Download the app. The QR code will come up uh, numerous times during this uh, game. You can see games like this and watch them on demand to your heart's content. Well, Canada staying with that same lineup that they finished the first quarter in. 
couple substitutions as we see number 12, uh, Strouchins in the game. Schelle, Zorix, Bertrand's coming up the stagger. He's got a second, that's all he needs, but no good on that one. Phil Scrub almost loses the ball. Alexander Walker, baseline penetration is blocked. But that's a great early take. It's a great early option. They didn't take anything and settle. Moved it. There's no way the defense was set. And he draws the contact. He, I don't think he needed necessarily needed to come to the far side of the ring. Could have gone up, maybe got the out one, but good ball movement, hit the second side. Comes off a stop and they run. Well, they had success getting Lappy into foul trouble early in the first quarter. Stay aggressive. Like I said, yeah, if you have a good open look early, why not? But no need to really force the issue if you're Canada. Because they do play well together. They do pass the ball. They are unselfish. Don't go away from what's giving you success. Scrub, Alexander Walker, Bell Haynes in the corner. He penetrates. He finds Olenek. Olenek takes a little bit of contact. No good. And it's going to be an offensive, a defensive rebounding foul. I think Olenek wanted the foul on the shot. Instead, Arturs Strouchins, number 12, I believe it was, is going to get called for the uh, rebounding foul. This is where I thought it was. You're allowed, what's it called? They called it, you know, the 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 plane, like they're yeah, allowed to but, 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 Yeah, that was a good job, straight up. Here they're back into that zone. Olenek underneath, easy two-point basket for him. Yeah, it's a super card. The line of the card just got in front of that. Back player reaching foul, and Scrub doesn't need a foul there, does he? No. I like it, though. I like seeing this aggressive defense yeah. after a made basket. Go ahead and get up, play, play full-court defense. You have the talented, athletic players to be able to do that. Call for that foul, as he was saying, no, he hooked me, though. But well, he he got his arm in. He was trying to get over the screen, which is kind of what you're taught to do yeah, defensively. Yeah. Just but. got his arm caught going over the screen. I think uh, Mr. Porzingis agreed with the call. <laughs> well, it was also right in front of the referee, Jenna Renault. Zorix. Inside, oh! The little man, Bell Haynes, thought he was gonna get a block. Instead, he gets called for a foul. Rajulis is gonna join, enjoy a trip to the free throw line. You know what, like, uh, while well, we've got a chance to say, it. we've been talking a lot about teams, like, really getting after the referees. I gotta say, this Canadian team is not worried about the referee's call. I mean, you know, Coach Fernandez will, make, will ask, like, the bench haven't been... And maybe maybe the referee should know, you know, if Canada can do it, why do they let some of these other teams get in the ear so much? Especially in front of the crowd, you know? I mean, you know, Trey Bell Haynes, who got called, he yeah. had a little reaction, but it wasn't towards the referee. No, that's just frustration. Yeah. You're, you're going to be frustrated. R.J. Barrett, edge him in the corner, gets it up to Olenek. Good defense, but nice ball movement by Canada. Alexander Walker pivots out of bounds, so ball back, and a nice defensive possession. Wow. wow. Well, there's, there's some discipline. Their, their, their effort was great. Easy, easy to reach in that situation. And you've got to give uh, Argus Schell so much credit. It's like, OK, there's your free foot. There's your, there's your pivot foot. I'm not going to let you pivot past me. Zorix. Skelly. 
finds Bertrand's in the corner. He gives it up. They're going to penetrate. Skelly just loses the ball. Luka Bank, he's a little unhappy with the, what, he's, what he's asking about, I think. He's a bit concerned about the reset when the time was reset and he just wanted the referees to make the table aware. And, that, you know, again, you, you're entitled to ask the questions, especially the coach. So, everyone's aware that he wasn't happy. Lavia has been struggling to get that same rhythm in this second quarter so far. Well, good thing is Canada are not making a lot of their baskets, so they're still up 10, 15 to 25. It has been a slow quarter, though. Like you said, Brooks now back in for Canada. Goes inside to Olenek. Olenek now one-on-one -on -one coverage. Nice little hook shot is good for him. It's a little bit deja vu, isn't it? When France challenged Canada, Olenek was the guy that steadied the Canadian ship. Zorix. And Olenek with the contest. So Bertrand is very upset with that call. He's saying, I didn't hit him. Let's see here. I mean, they both hit each other. Olenek just had more movement after the hit. I just think that's, <laughs> that's two great players banging around the yeah. post. The ball has definitely slowed down for, for Latvia. Two that, veteran players, too. Yeah, as well, yeah. Canada have really slowed down the tempo. RJ Barrett from the corner, no good. Backdoor cut, nice catch. Somehow finds Skelly. Oh, how about that up and under? They just play with so much confidence. Absolutely. Like, they're not intimidated at all by the athleticism and the height of Canada. Yep. Alexander Walker gets it to Brooks. Brooks lets it fly. Back rim. Offensive rebound, though. Barrett just missed one the last time down. No good. And another rebounding foul. You said, how is Latvia going to keep Canada off the boards? Well, they're that, keeping them off the boards. But not legally. <laughs> I mean, that's the issue for them. It's because they're just, unless they get position early to box out, they just can't compete. And they've had to reach a few times. This is a super little finish off the glass with a left hand. First time they've sped the ball up in the half court. Alexander Walker left open. <laughs> And Canada desperately needed to see a shot go in from the three-point range. And a touch foul, not touch, but yeah. hand was on him, so he couldn't go where he wanted to foul. Canada. This could be a very long call, I know. Yeah, three of 14 from three-point range. Olenek going out for Canada. I think he's been by far their most consistent performer in that first part of the game. Very like the French first half. Canada have not trailed much in this tournament. Zagas. Skelly, a little bit of hang time on that pass, extra pass. Ooh. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Zagas, he is only 23 years old, folks, and we are going to be saying his name for a long time to come. How about that defense, though, by Kurtz? But no, Kurtz just can't hold on to it. And SGA stayed with it, got the offensive rebound. Powell not able to finish. Looks like it's going to be an easy basket for Latvia. No, they kick it out. Zagas. It was tipped. No. Oh, I thought we had a whistle. <laughs> and great pass inside to Bertrand. Did you hear a whistle? I thought I heard a whistle. Yeah. Could be the fans. I hope There's not. There's a lot of them. SGA 
Not a lot of movement here by Canada as they're all watching the person with the ball. And Alexander Walker make that two in about two minutes from three-point range for him. Zagas wants to set up the offense now for Latvia as he crosses over and goes all the way to the basket and that's an and one as Dylan Brooks just gets caught with his feet nailed to the ground. How about? And that's that's exactly what we're talking about before. You know, they haven't they haven't been able, they haven't been broken down on the dribble in the first two games at all. So no one worries about helping too much. And that's the fourth or fifth occasion where they've been beaten at the ball and they've allowed Latvia to create with advantage off that dribble. If you'd have asked me before the game that was going to be that effective, I'd have said no way would Latvia be able to break this team down. But they have broken them down. Sometimes when they have advantage on closeouts, other times just like that, one on one, extra point. This is just, again, Latvia just being Latvia. You said it, Latvia being Latvia. And player of the game, last game for Latvia with that win over France. Olenek, no good. Powell tips it out. Barrett. And they find the hot hand this quarter. No. And falls back into his hands, though. SGA, his three-point shot is good, though. You give Canada too many opportunities, they are going to make you pay, and that's what just happened on that possession. They're literally living on the glass at the moment. It's the only thing that's keeping them tight here. Curix, a little bit of an advantage inside, no good. Shea with the rebound, pushing the tempo, finds Barrett running hard, and Barrett throws it home. Well, it's been a little bit of up and down recently. And Canada with a nice little run here as you see Barrett finish the fast break basket. Lapia and Coach Bunky want to talk about it, so let's try and listen in. We need to play smart basketball, guys. Pass the ball, don't over dribble the ball. Don't stack on nice situation. This is not the way to play. This is not the style we play. Every time we share the ball, we find open man. Remember, destroy their consistency with the multiple action, not with the ISO. This is not the way to have to play. Okay? Now, hey, this offense. Sorry. Hey, you can't sum up why Lavia are good any more than that timeout that Coach Banky took. You know, it's not about isolation, it's not about one on one, it's about multiple actions. And against a defense that appears to be just chasing everything, multiple actions are going to come up open. Canada have just got to find a way to contain the ball. If they do that, then their defensive pressure will become effective. But Lavia, just when they move the basketball, are coming up open so often. Great reads, great actions, but they have somehow got to find a way to take care of business on the boards. You take away the offensive rebounding, and we're looking at a 15-point lead here for Latvia. Yeah, offensive, re yeah, and the offensive, the rebounding fouls as well for Latvia. Yeah. I like, I like that timeout, though, where he oh. says, this is not the way we play. Plain and simple, this is not the way we play. Let's see how Lapia can respond, especially on this offensive possession. Zorix gets it. I don't think Zorix wanted that, did he? And that no, I think he was surprised. <laughs> But they get it to Zaga, so no worries. And now uh, Schmidt's back in, which is a good sign. As Latvia, they played well without him, and they haven't really needed him, which is an even better sign. They throw it up to him. Inside, outside action. And off the front of the rim, but who's there for the offensive rebound? And it, oh, 
luckily, I was going to say, Powell got a hand on that because it might have become an easy basket had Zagars beat Powell to the ball. Either way, it went out of bounds on White, so it is going to be red ball. Uh, Smith's called that whole thing, recognized he has a mismatch. He probably could have gone up, but he kicked it for the three. It's just IQ basketball is just it's so good. Schmidt. Well, he might be a little cold. He sat for a while, actually. Yeah, that second foul really hurt him. Bit of a roll of the dice to put him back in. Alexander Walker, no good. Nice rebound there by Kurix. Zorich gets it up to Schmidt. Outside, and again, inside out action. They don't care about, I missed the last one. That doesn't matter anymore. Can't bring it back. I've got my feet set. I'm knocking this down. Olenek goes straight at Schmidt, probably knowing he has two fouls. And tough, tough basket by Dwight Powell is good as Grizzul is a little upset saying, I was, I was straight up though. I think it was like the first action and the referee let it go there. Before it got to there, he hit him on the way up. And there's always a debate about when the referee said, oh, I'm gonna let it go until this point. And I think the, the take the switch out after making the three is purely 252 to go, purely like I've got through those extra minutes with him on two fouls. We're still up eight. Let's yeah. not take a risk. I, I'll take him out now, and then I'm all right. He'll be fine for the second half. Then again, he's bringing in Bertrands. So he's not, you know. <laughs> it's not a bad substitution. It's not a bad rotation. Is what you're saying? OK. <laughs> it's almost like I rolled the dice for those few minutes. I don't want to get greedy, especially on the last play where they tried to post him up. Bertrands, an NBA guy for Davies Bertrands, number eight for uh, this Lapian team. Brzulis gets it back. Oh, I don't know why he gave it up, but this is the way that they play. Penetration kick, penetration kick. He got it off, no good though. Oh no, sorry, shot clock violation. And, and, and then when people say that, oh, they missed, they had loads of open shots. So it's not good and bad by the fact that if they make it or not, that's not the deal. There was plenty, of, to be fair to Canada, they really did scramble and close out really effectively on that one. And they just have to do it every time. As soon as one person forgets, someone's wide open. And Bertrands is going to be called for a foul. He's going to have to be careful. Not sure what he's... Uh... Well, Olenek stopped and posted up, so I don't know why Bertrand is complaining because he carried on and, and mowed him over. You can go with him or not? Don't complain, forget it. Forget it, no more. Don't complain, no. Oh, you heard that referee saying no complain more. So everybody, every player heard it. <laughs> we heard it. We heard it. <laughs> so if there's more complaints, you'd expect the referees to deal with it. And the foul count, I mean, it's 9 to 12, 9 for Canada, 12 for Latvia. It's not no. crazy uh, one-sided, should I say, Olenek. Well, at least two of those Latvian fouls are just silly fouls way up the floor. Yeah. Canada really getting after it defensively now. They've stepped it up. Not off the passing lane at all. Zorik, uh, Zagar, sorry. Tries to go inside, but that pass is tipped out of bounds. It's just moving Latvia like that extra two, three feet further outside the three-point line. And they're the percentages they've got to play now. Zorix. Gujulis gets a shot up, but it is no good. Alexander Walker with the hand time, and the basket is good. Well, for all the quality and all of the, the percentage shooting for Lavia Canada with this play, have cut it to three and have a chance to cut it to two. Nice finish by Alexander Walker as Edgem is coming in for Powell. It's a little smaller lineup. They've done a really nice job. The last 
three, four minutes, they really have been that extra step into the lane. They've done a better job containing the ball. No three-point play there for Alexander Walker. Davis Bertrand gives it up. Zorix. Oh, deep three-point shot off the front of the rim. Offensive rebound is good, though, for Lapia. Oh. <laughs> wow, what good basketball there by Lapia. Nice patience. Zagals attacks the defense, draws two, and finds oh. his big man. I actually think it was the right call. It was just a little late, but I always say better right. Right and late, not wrong and let it go. Yeah. You can't warn him again because your co-official has already warned him. How about that pass, though, from 55 on the offensive end? We know he just picked up the foul on the other end. And as far as fouls go, we have Schmitz with three. So I'm, I'm absolutely with Coach Fernandez on this. He's saying, like, you just warned them, now you've warned them again. I mean, we make, we make, I think the teamwork for referees is exceptional. And so if you are warning, then you are warning. And I think we always say you only have to do it once to stop it, right? You would hope. You would hope. Zorix now. As Coach Luca Banki got a technical foul. Well, SGA to the line to shoot the technical for Canada. And his shot is good. Lafayette are going to get the ball back, though. Pulled the referee for doing it. He said, he said to people, that's enough. You, don't you always want to know what they said? <laughs> You'd lo I'd love to know what yeah. they said. Zagas. Skip pass. Kurix, tough, tough take. Tough. Nice take. The pass was great because it gave him the baseline take, but he had to go and go straight away. Super finish. SGA to Olenek. And a great response by Kelly Olenek for Canada. Well, they're trailing by one. It's about a four second differential. Shot clock, game clock. Zorix. They got four seconds. Zorix is going to have to go at Olenek. He does. No good. There's time. Canada, R.J. Barrett beats the clock. He didn't throw it down. You don't need to. Sometimes two points, no matter how you get it, even if it's not fancy, it still works. And it's a little bit of heat because uh, Bertrand's accidentally knocked. Uh, I don't think any of it was on purpose because both of their eyes were up at the ball. So Alexander Walker with a little bit of a dangerous fall, but a nice finish. Canada finally take the lead for the first time in this game, right before half, 43 to 42 over Latvia. Wow, stats wise, 30% from the three point line for Canada, only 39 for Latvia, it's dipped below 40. But the rebound numbers don't tell you the whole story because of those 23 rebounds for Canada, the percentage of offensive rebounds much higher. Olenek, remarkable job by him, leads their scorers with 10. Zagas has them, but both, te both teams sharing points as they make their way to the locker room. We're going to get a chance to look at the best plays of or the, the performance of the key players in that half, and then we'll get a chance to look at the best plays. 
Zagas, as I said before the game, two from two, two from three. Picked <laughs> up where he left off. Yeah. And we said about Kelly Onik, when it, was a, when it wasn't flowing and, and where did they go, he was the guy that really did perform consistently throughout that first half for Canada. Le again, the 30-year-old showing all his experience. This second quarter, though, really what you won't see in these best plays is how much, in, how much better Canada were defensively, forcing Latvia just. It's only a matter of feet. You force them three, four feet further outside the three-point line, puts more pressure, and that really did slow up that Latvian team. Well, Latvia, they played good for 20 minutes. Canada, nice little run to finish out that second quarter. That was their first lead of the game with that R.J. Barrett layup right at the buzzer. So uh, you have to feel good if you're a Latvian fan. I think they played well, but I think that's how they, they are used to playing. They didn't play out of their minds. Canada, maybe not the team that we have seen uh, in the last two games, a lot of, a lot of a lot more of one-on-one, -on -one, which wasn't really necessary. I think trying to put up tough shots, trying to drop fouls when you have open teammates. But again, it was the first time they've ever really been down for an extended period of time. And I think uh, players wanted to start to take over. And they're way too talented to have to play like that. It's halftime here in Jakarta. Canada up one, 43 to 42. We have a good one. This is for first place in Group H. So a lot on the line. We will be back in a few minutes. Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are all on the same team. We have the power to change lives through basketball. Together, Together we, we are, are stronger. stronger. No, no matter, matter your, your origin, origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. Nunes has it. Take the ball screen, turns the corner, goes inside, picks it back, throws it down, Jose Gomez! Aggressive, throws it down, Nunes with a great assist. This is extraordinary, and, and it's a tough shot. Take something like that, what a pass! A Doncic dinner party, Doncic to Toby. And he's loving his own work. Maybe oh. nice a chance to leave the break. Two on one. Oh, what a block! Yeah, how much Jefferson can create. So he's definitely going to put it up. The three. He's fouled! You cannot be serious! It only it takes an amazing athlete to make a play like that. O'Hare driving baseline. Wow. Two hand slam this time. Oh. Talk about some bounce. Kubion with his head up around the rim on that two-hand dunk. Fernandez goes upstairs. Garuba! No! Hanging on the rim. Gets the ball back. Mendoza. Dodges flips past him. And it counts. Luka Dodges unstoppable through the lane. And Mendoza, he did the right thing. Make Luka beat you off the dribble rather than just standing back. So he closes out. Now, this is going to be capable. Just Sengali doesn't quite get there. Moving to his right, doesn't get there with it in time.
block this. Oh, he does. Unbelievable block for Jackson. Kind of glances off the rim to Aguari. Nice bounce pass. Holy cow. What a finish. He just elevated above everyone. Left hand throw down. That is a highlight for Hollis Jefferson. in the international basketball world forever. Well, it's halftime here in Jakarta as Latvia led for most of that game. Actually led for 19 minutes and five seconds. But at the buzzer, somehow Canada go into halftime up one. Uncharted territory being down that long for Canada. Not sure. Not sure I can say that they responded well until really the last five minutes of that second quarter. Kelly Olenek, when things are going wrong and it's difficult for Canada, he is always stepping up. And that's what you expect from your veteran leader, captain of this Canadian team. Big, nice first half for him with 10 points. Lafayette, on the other hand, you mentioned it quickly at halftime, Mark. Like, at what point do we start just expecting this is how good Lafayette is? <laughs> well, now, I yeah. mean, it, it, maybe we should have done it beforehand with their quality, you know, with their qualification record. I mean, we said before the game, didn't we? It's like, don't turn the ball over too much. I mean, they've only turned it over six times. But um, Canada only have five points off turnovers, which is way under where they've been in the previous two games. But 10 offensive rebounds for Canada. They haven't always 
necessarily scored on the first putback, but they've had multiple situations where they have three offensive rebounds at a time. Yeah. And you cannot give a team like Canada three or four looks at the hoop and expect them to not score. Smith's is, uh, foul troubles is a concern, obviously, for, uh, for Latvia. On a positive side, Davis Bertrands has not got going at all by his, compar his standards. So both teams can take a lot of positive out the first half. Canada, the way they came back. Latvia, the way the fact that one or two of their major players haven't really started to contribute. Shona, I think we could, in some ways, Latvia are going to overachieve again because they've lost yet another player. But this could go down all the way to the wire and we'll find a lot out about Canada. I think we know everything we need to know about Latvia. You know, their, their qualification their record, everything. Yeah. Everything's there. Disappointed with Luka Banki to get the technical and sometimes coaches talk about needing to get a technical. I don't really think it had that effect. And it wasn't really, I'm not, maybe we'd love to know what he said, but it wasn't really a real vocal outburst. It was just yeah. something he said. He must have, uh, you said it, he must have used some kind of language yeah. that the referees did not appreciate. Yeah. And he ends up getting that technical. But you have to, you know, with the foul trouble and the amount of time that uh, Schmidt spent on the Everybody bench for Lapia. You have to feel pretty good about where you are against this Canadian team. I mean, you completely made them play differently on offense, and they have been such an offensive, powerful team scoring. You know, in their first game, they scored 95 po points against France, who typically, historically, have been one of the best uh, defensive teams in these FIBA competitions. And then they had 128 points against Lebanon. So they know how to score. And Latvia have done a pretty good job to keeping them only to 43 points and a half. From the first possession, focus on individuals. First offense, first offense, we go. Ragi Giro, OK? And gradually, pay attention. When we go the last action, we expect you to go like this. Okay, on the first, to enter, to play behind. If we have an open drive, if not, pass back. Three, we two, have the four man to burn the spot and just in case extra. Hey, we are in the last seconds of the possession. Be aggressive, okay? Come on. Hey. Well, Roland Smits is going to start this uh, second half carrying those three fouls. And he's been, he's been around various European teams for so long. It was Algiris last season, but so he knows how to play in foul trouble. You just need his aggression on the glass. That's yeah. the thing that, that, that you've got to worry about. If there's one thing this team really, really has to do is they have to rebound the ball as hard as they've rebounded it ever if they want to get this win. It's half... Well, it hasn't started yet. I was just about to say it's... But right from minute one... They, halfway they, through this yeah. game. <laughs> They're taking, they're taking them away out of what they want. They wanted to get it to Gilles Alexander, and they just said, no, get it to someone else. Yeah. Well, second half action underway here in Jakarta, Canada, with a slight one-point lead. Barrett. They give it to Olenek. Olenek now finds a cutting R.J. Barrett. And nice patience and cut to the basket as Olenek finds Barrett and an easy two-point basket. You hate it when, when, you, when you guys get beat on a front cut like that. Just kills your defense. Zagas almost turns it over, but finds Schmitz in the corner. Shot, front rim, rebound Olenek. Get it up to Brooks, back to SGA. SGA is left open. Can't do that. You can't. You, if 
if you're going to get caught on the screen like that, you have to switch it. You can't give him that much time and space. They look a little... They look a little flat. I know they get the great penetration of Zagas. They need something to get them going a little bit. Oh, good job. Nice, easy finish there by uh, Grajulis. Brooks penetration knocks over Zagars. And this is a different different start for Canada early in this third quarter, as we saw in the first quarter. Defense leads to easy offense as SGA throws it home. And didn't even hear the whistle, did you? Yeah. Well, well like timeout. Ben just said, like, I've seen enough already. Seen enough, yeah. Canada up nine, so quick eight. 10 to 8 start, 10 to 2 start. Let's listen in and see what Banky wants to change. Hey, Sally, what's good? Hey, I don't like you play so passive and you expose the ball. We know that's the style. Speed up, protect the ball, beat him, and advance the ball. That's what we need. Play with personality. Okay? That's what we need. Yeah, the graphics okay. just a little wrong because Latvia had that little jump hook. It's a 10-2 run, not a 10-0 run. And uh, Coke, it's almost as though Coke, Coach Banchi just thinks he's wasted half time now. He's wasted, they've wasted that. They've had to, he's had to bring them back in and remind them how hard they have to play because they played a little soft, as he said, passive. And they've gone under it. They haven't really chased over a screen. Yusuf Alexander had a tough first half. They've just given him a wide open three and a breakaway two. Points off yeah. their defense. Canada are in the ascendancy. This we've never doubted Latvia's result because they came. How many times did they go ten down to France and they came back? This isn't France though. This is Canada and a Canada that's confident. Well, Gilgis Alexander with a nice start for Canada. We talked about it a little bit at halftime, how he had a quiet first half against France and then just took over in the second half. And I think the coaching staff had a lot to do with that. Like, hey, Shay, you got to stay aggressive. Zagar sidestep. And that shot, no good. So a couple front run shots for Lafayette as they go right inside to Barrett. Barrett's pass is tipped. Still lots of time on the shot clock, though. As Brooks penetrates, finds Powell. Powell picks up his dribble. Olenek, shot fake, and takes it all the way to the basket. And that ball goes out of bounds. And nice sportsmanship there. The referee is nice and warns the uh, Canadian players and the D Latvian defenders. There's 2.8 seconds. Olenek has to let it fly. He does. No good. Powell tips it almost. But Zagar is there fighting for the rebound. And Banky said, you have to play harder. Well, the Canadian transition defensively. Everything for Canada is a step quicker. It's a great start to this third quarter for them. And now settling for jumpers now. It's not in the rhythm of what they, they're used to running, Latvia. Olenek back to Barrett. And I think that foul. Smith's, yeah. Smith's off ball. So another off-ball foul. Latvia have been called for quite a few off-ball fouls. He looks like he's going to stay in the game, though. Luka Manke would like let him run for a possession or so, then take him out. I, I, sometimes I get tempted to do the same thing. Ooh, fancy ball handling. Is this why they left him in? Well, no, not that time, but he can definitely knock down the three-point shot. And fans don't like that call, but it is gonna go Canada ball. And, and Latvia didn't, uh, the players didn't think it was the, the wrong eye, they just got back, so. Olenek, again, a face cut. Oh, what a block. Wow. Well, Powell looked like he was gonna posterize. 
And Zagars just gets lifted up by his teammate, Rudy Kurix. That's four fouls on Brooks as well, I think. Here's that block. Whew. Great job attacking the, uh, getting a hand on the ball. That's a clean block. Yeah, yeah. May have been better just keeping two hands on it and going with two hands, but. I think he's got a little bit of blood. It's nothing major. This is after he can't play when he's uh, got a little bit of blood. They'll clean that up. See, Latvia, it's important they score on this possession. You know, they made a bit of a statement with a defensive end. Just got to get some momentum back into their game. Another three-point shot well off the mark for Latvia, and they look a little slower than they did earlier. SGA's shot is no good. They're just like a foot further out, two yeah. feet further out. The defense from Canada is just, a, it's just another level than the first half. But it's all, it, this is what we saw them do against France. Yep. And that shot was well short. They almost look a little tired as well, all their shots. Yep short right now. Bertrand somehow keeps it alive. I don't know how they scored on that possession, but you never stop playing, no. that's for sure, and that's why. Take it, they needed two anyway they could get them on that yeah. one. SGA spin move, and he just makes it look easy. As you saw Powell there, just a little bit of a cut. I'm sure he will be back in the game shortly. And too aggressive defensively there for Canada was Alexander Walker. Yeah. Easy call. Yeah. Skell had a really positive impact the first time he came into the first half. He's got to do it again right now. Kurix, ooh, nice cut. And Olenek, I believe, might be called for the foul. Nice pass by Kurix to the cutting Grajulis. And not able to throw it home. But he is going to go to the free throw line. It's almost like this is why you go with two hands, I suppose. Yeah. Brazilis had, and I know that people will say it's 15 minutes to go in the game, but Latvia are hanging on at the moment. They need, they need to find a way to get into that rhythm again. They need to keep the scoreboard ticking over. Brazilis on the free throw line. These two free throws crucial. You know, it keeps them in touch, keeps them in single digits. At some point, they're going to get a run of threes. Linnick going out and uh, Powell back in. Oh, it's his thumb. SGA clears out Powell. That's a step back three point shot. Well, short. Hey, Grizzulis did a nice job. Yeah. Really. Kept contesting the shot, kept his hand up. Daggers off the feet of Barrett, so it's gonna, well, nope, shot clock's at 15, so it'll stay at 15. defense there yeah, again it's great defense yeah they know who they want to go to instead of catching the ball on the three-point line you're catching it six feet outside and that's just the percentage is just working your favor there yep. skelly to Kurtz. that's a tough tough take wow and that is a great finish by Kurtz. well rotas Rod and Kurtz. he's had supporting roles coach said he was great he's a great part of the team with just one two-pointer the other night, but he's really productive at the moment. Sp 
spin move. It's going to be a turnover. Lapia have numbers. Kurix beats everyone oh. down the clock. Protected the ball so well. LJ Barron did really well to get yeah. back in the play. And the crowd are back. <laughs> the crowd are definitely back. Is they're trailing by three. They started slow. Banky had to call a timeout, but Latvia have woken up since then. And that was a good look by Latvia. They just Canada got lucky. They need Bertrands to. They need Bertrands to start hitting shots. He really has not had a Bertrands game so far. Open look, he didn't doubt himself, everything else. They just need, there's nothing wrong with anything. He just needs to make, he makes, starts making shots. Yeah. They're, they're back in, the, they're really back in the game. And that was a great look. Oh, yeah. Can't ask for a more open look against no. a, a strong athletic defensive team like Canada. SGA. That's great help. Yeah. Ooh. Banky has a challenge if he wants to challenge it. Yeah, but the referee right in front of us yep. didn't, you know, say no, 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 for sure it went yep. off and... I'm with, you're absolutely right. Barrett. Draws the foul. That's another one of those 1.9 on the shot clock I know. fouls again. You know, like, it's almost as though the more adversity that Latvia face, the better they play. Now they've got Smiths in four on four fouls. Since he's gone out, they've actually done better. And I'm like, this is going to be so difficult for them to deal with. And that's going to be an offensive foul, I believe, going against Dwight Powell on the screen. And it's going to be his third personal, so Kelly Olenek will come in as he will go out. Oh, tough, oh, tough wow. take and finish. Way to protect the ball. You use your body, use the backboard. That's a, that's a, that's a finish. Shay now just says, don't worry, I'll take over for Canada. They can't stop me. And when he does that, they can't. And he gets, <laughs> when he gets that deep, doesn't matter how much pressure you put on, he's struggling from the three-point line. He's doing a great job getting to the ring. It's almost like a switch. Oh, nice hands, great defense. Canada, three on one. Barrett is fouled. And Latvia have to be careful with their reactions. They're wanting to travel, right? I think so. Take advantage. And now, oh, tough pass. Oh, missed opportunity. GA goes all the way. Something just switches in him as a player, yep. especially offensively. When he gets in the keyway, he's scoring. I mean, <laughs> there's so many different ways to finish plays. Kurix, shot fake, and that's going to be a foul going against Olenek. And how many does he have? 
Oh, he only has to be a second, but that will be Canada's uh, 15 foul. So Latvia now. Look at this. He has great body control. Smith's coming back with four fouls. 209 to the third. Do you think uh, Banky talked? Like, did they have a conversation before putting him back in? Possibly. Yeah, you know, and it's like, there's always a debate. Yeah, what's, what are you saving someone for? Right. Now, okay, it's always a gamble. It's always a judgment. And also, they're not deep in that spot. So, you know, you put Paul Zingas back in the lineup, then all of a sudden this, net, this situation is not existing. So what is... You gotta say, Banky's trying to win the game by putting him back in the game. Right. Now. What does he do? Wait till the, the, the nine down again? He's got very few opportunities to play Bertrand and Smith together. So yeah. he's gonna have to try yeah. and run it now. It's probably almost as big as he can go. <laughs> you gotta stop that man first, though. He's not passing off. Bertrand's woes continue. Yeah, you just imagine if he has a little bit better night and he got a foul earlier before he's going up into yep. his shot. One, you, you know, when when Shaquille just Alexander plays like this, not one person can stop him. I think you have to really close the gaps and yeah. don't let him even see a lane line. Maybe make other players start to, to try and score for Canada because it has been no, it's like it, all him this quarter. Obviously, you know, where, where Banky, Luka Banky wants to help from is obviously their team and where they want to help from. But wherever you help, know you're going to help early and then rotate and then ask them someone else to score, as you say. And rotate so that he has to throw the long one. You've got a chance to, to close out. You've got to fly with the ball. What you can't do is carry on doing what you're doing. I mean, he has 13 of Canada's 19 points. Offensive rebound. And they get it back to the hot hand. A little shake and bake. See, I think that's good defense. Yeah. But guess what? <laughs> but that's OK, right? Yeah. That's OK. You have to kind of accept something. You don't really want to rotate away from the guy on the ball side, but. Again, they're in that situation again, Lavia. It's a little bit deja vu. This is where they were against France. Continuing going 9, 10 down, and somehow finding a way back. Zorix, spin move, wow. nice finish against Olenek. So, Lavia, you said it. They've been in this position before already in this tournament, and this is only the third game of the tournament. So you kind of say they're used to this a little bit. This is not a good matchup. No, not with four fouls, especially. Shay, stop! Shoots! Surely someone has to go help him and make him get rid of the ball. Well, ball tipped out, and it's going to go back to Canada. There's about three second differential shot clock and game clock. So big defensive possession. Canada up 10. Taking their time, letting the shot clock wind down. They find SGA back over to Alexander Walker, who is left wide open. No good. Couple seconds left. Oh, turns it over to the wrong person, and they got lucky on that. As you see, the captain, Cyrus Bertrand, says, what were you doing, brother? <laughs> Literally, his brother. <laughs> well, at the end of three, Canada up 10 on Latvia, 67 to 57. Well, looking at the numbers again, it's still, Latvia can't win shooting 27% from the three. They just can't win. It's just impossible for them to win shooting 27% from the three. And when you look at the guys missing the shots, they're guys that are gonna make shots at some point in the game. They just have to start making them now. Because Bertrand, Smith, they really have struggled from the three-point line. And as the game has gone on, 
the guards have had to work so much yeah. harder than the guards. Zorix haven't had the opportunity to come off the screens and create. And Canada's defense will wear you down. But they had the run in that, that third quarter, uh, Latvia, that pulled them back in. They were 12 down against France at the start of the fourth. And we were, well, could they come back? They were still nine down with five to go, so that you never write them off because they will score in a hurry. Done a better job on the glass, Latvia, in that quarter. But the only thing you can ever point out is that SGA has gone to work in the third quarter. You said it, what did he have, 13 <laughs> and 19 or whatever he had at that yeah, point? Yeah, I mean, he had eight points, eight points at halftime. He has 24 points now. And the great thing about him, Shona, the best thing in some ways is it wasn't really working from the three-point line. He made one, but then, so it's not working, so I'm going to go to work in the keyway. Yeah. And he's... His recognition of who's guarding him, where he can get a shot. Latvia had to send two people to make sure he can... So he gave it a shrub, shrub knocks down the three. It's... You know, he is, he's, in, he's in a great place as a player at the moment. They're going to give him the first few minutes of this fourth quarter off, then he'll be back. Zorix. Get past Skele, nice closeout. Oh, great movement away from the ball. Finds an easy two-point basket with that man, Smith, who has four fouls. Gonna show the zone. Yeah. Haven't shown it since the first quarter. <laughs> oh! Well, they got a dunk on the first quarter on the first possession, first play of the game in that zone as well against them. So Canada, good movement playing against the zone. They find a cutting Kelly Olenek. Zorix now. Grajulis up to Skele. Skele penetrates, little hang time, finds Schmidt. And this is a better Latvian team offensively than we saw in the third quarter. Yeah, much more aggressive. Yeah. Brooks kind of had a quiet day, a little bit of foul trouble for him. Olenek. I just think Olenek is ultimately is like the foundation of this team. His decisions, excellent quality of what he does on every aspect of the game, and he can score. He can score. Shkele, baseline penetration, kicks it to Zorix. He gets it back. He's played well at moments. That three-point shot, no good. Brooks now. And it's going to go a foul against Zorix. We haven't even talked about uh, Lou Dort, who has not played. Still protective, still yeah, precautionary. Yeah, I was told precautionary. A phrase that means everything and nothing. Said, so is he going to play again in this tournament? And oh, he uh, said, yes, on Friday. I said, OK, thank you. Still in the zone. Scrub. Well, that's what you give up. Yeah, but they're in a 1 2 2 zone. They can't give up their foul line, you know, the extended foul line jumper. They, they can't leave her, that good a shooter that far open. Schmitz now. Flare screen. Was open, but Grajulis and. It's going to be a foul going against Edgem on the rebound. So, ball, Latvia with a new 14 second shot clock. It's a dangerous foot margin at the moment. 7.35, 14 points. We're back in those moments where Latvia just have to keep the scoreboard ticking over. I know he's not had the best game of his really great career of his Bertrands, but maybe this is when you bring him back. Zorix pass, turnover. Canada, they're dangerous after turnovers, especially Scrub lets that one go. 
And there's a reason why Jordi Fernandez has a lot of confidence in all his players because they deserve it. Well, Bunky now, he's going to have to use his second time out here in this half with 7 to 18 left. And now the lead ballooning for Canada as they have jumped out to 11 to 4 lead. Let's listen in. Well, that, that, that uh, 11 4 run is 11 4 against the zone. They really have been unable to stop them getting shots they want right from the alley oop to the open threes. And they've increased the lead without Sinus Alexander on the floor. So, you know, they're. The quality they have as a group. We said that this game would ask, answer a number of questions, even if Latvia came back. I think we already, uh, the way that Canada have dealt with the situation up until now is they are, they're, they're for real right now. Doesn't matter who's not on the roster for, for Latvia. Yeah. This is the same Latvian team that went out, beat France, and at the moment, they're 17 down. If they don't make shots, Canada are back in that mode of scoring. Uh, Canada, they're just so deep. I mean, Phil Scrub, who didn't play a lot in the first game against France, played well in their second game and deserved, is deserving of this playing time right now, has already knocked down two threes. Like, they are just so dangerous from every position. Scrub to Olenek, Olenek thought about it, penetrates, uh, miscommunication with Edgem. Kurix outside, they find Schmitz open. Nice ball reversal. And maybe some tired legs a little bit at the uh, end of this game, or no, they're just missing shots. Well, Schmitz has sat down a lot. True. You know, because of his foul trouble, but I think, you know, when Canada play this sort of way, they, they are, it is tired, but you're just worn down because of the, the pace of the defense. And then you get plays like that from Olenek, where he's out one, he's on one on three on the glass, and he just outworks everybody. And it's just you don't you don't get a possession off when Canada are playing like this. No, you do not. It's just relentless in terms of you've got to make great plays or enough good plays every time, otherwise they're going to run it right at you. And as you said, they're so deep that Coach uh, Fernandez can keep running people in. And as we've said all the way along, as a group, they seem pretty bought into everything he's trying to do. Well, I think they understand that they have to buy in. I think they understand that they have to buy in if they want to get to where they want to be. But it's not always easy to uh, Get a bunch of men to buy in to what you what they need to do. RJ Barrett just goes all the way to the basket. And the other thing we keep saying, show that you know, there's going to be a little group in the second round. Latvia will not want a big, big defeat on their in their win-loss columns. Brooks with the steal. Barrett. Tried to draw the foul, and he did. And the bench of Lapia is going to have to be careful about their reactions. Let's not forget, head coach Luca Banki already has one technical, so he can't get another one. I'll make the same point I've made before, though. They're already on a warning, right? That's enough. I don't want any more complaints. And half the bench and the coach was up again. Nice. They've given them the technical, fair enough. Well, it's actually Sec a bench technical, yeah. not a Luca Banki technical. Oh, no, not a Luca Banki. Half the, half, the half the bench was up. Yeah. And the referee had warned them, so that's what they, they should expect, nothing else. Yep. Well, Zagar is frustrated, saying, what else can I do? Barrett struggling from the free throw line in this game. 
We saw him with a little bit of shooting woes. I say shooting woes. Still doing a lot and playing well. 11 points a game. But has only shot 50% from the free throw line in the tournament. And tonight he is 0 for 4. So that's not going to help his percentage. Nope. If you can hear this crowd, they're not, they're not giving up on their team at all. They've been phenomenal for the first three days, this Latvian crowd. It's important they get a run here. Important they get back in the game, whether they get all the way back or not. Zegar's just lays on the floor, like, really? I, I, every, I'm trying to come off this, then someone yeah. out. Every time I'm under pressure. And Luka Banki asked them to move the ball. The trouble is, because everyone's in a pass lane, it's hard to get the ball moving. They need to get the ball moving earlier, if they can. And the do not let Canada set the defense. It's very easy to sit here and say it. Zajulis up to Zorex. Zorex now. Uses the screen, Canada switching defense because they can. Grizulis, finally a three-point shot goes in. 13 points for that man. Gilgis Alexander hasn't had to play a lot in this fourth quarter. Got a huge third quarter for them. Ooh, nice hands. Pick the pocket. Oh, just not able to come up with it. Shot clock wasn't reset. And Dwight Powell had to put up a tough shot. One from the corner, can't make that one. Schmitz, nice offensive rebound, draws the foul, so he's gonna get to go to the free throw line. There's still more than four and a half minutes oh, left yeah. in this game. There's actually plenty of time, especially considering how good of a three-point shooting team Latvia is in the tournament so far. They're shooting 46% here tonight. They are at 26. Imagine they just start knocking down some of their threes. Wait, let's not forget, yeah. Davis Bertrand, Nope, a great nope. three-point yep. shooter, and he has had a cold night. Very cold night. He's as cold as the air conditioning in this gym because we're, fr <laughs> we're freezing, and he's as cold as us. But he's still, it's, it's one of those things, you know, if you just said, these are the shots he's going to take, it's not as if he's forced shots. He just hasn't made shots you would expect him to make. They need to, they need to stop some runs right now. Well, for two, one, they might be able to get back in this game. Well, not when that happens. Not when that happens, as Alexander Walker was left open and almost comes up with the defensive steal. The ball went out of bounds back to Lapia. Latvia now. Look how far away they are yep. from the basket. Zorix having to go one on one. Somehow gets a shot up over Powell. Schmidt hustling for the ball. But no, Canada comes up with it. And almost a turnover. Gilgis Alexander. Oh my goodness, it's easy. It's, it's 16 feet and in, he's so tough. He, he can stop, like in an instant, he can get past you, <laughs> he can create different angles. He may not be the best three-point shooter in the world, 
he's a good three-point shooter. Yeah. But, you know, but like, geez, he's You have to respect his oh, three-point yeah. shot enough that then his first step. Ooh. Be interested to see how other teams try and construct while well, they know what's going to happen and then how he corrects for other right. people. But wow, he's uh, he is one of the stories of this first round across this World Cup. Quiet first half, as you said, eight points, as he was against France, and then just takes over the game in the second half. And they've done it today, guy. Like Brooks has had limited time because he's in a foul trouble. Foul trouble, yeah. Only again, no Lou Dort. You know, Barrett's had a better game for them apart yeah. from the free throw line. So there's a lot of good things happening with that team right now. Oh, great defense! Nice effort. Way to read the dribble there was Curix, and now Bertrand's. He's double teamed. Finds Curix. Gets it back. Ah, oh, and he should Still not caught. find the bottom of the basket, but that is a great, great look for Lapia. Rodian Corix is possibly the best option they've had at guard in uh, SGA. He's long, he's quick. Yep, yeah. nice hands, moves his feet. And obviously, he's, you know, he's playing in the ACB, he's playing at a great level. So he's having to switch and guard people. He's done a really nice job today, he's had a good game. No good is Zorix, and I want to say that, you know, maybe this defense is the toughest that Lapia has gone up against as R.J. Barrett just barrels his way down the key and an easy two-point basket for him. But... Oh, no, you can you say that. <laughs> <laughs> you, they're playing a very, very... They're playing the best defense that they've had to go up against in this tournament, and I think oh. that's why we're also seeing their three-point shooting numbers dip. Well, well okay. absolutely. You know, and the thing we, you know, we're talking about is we get... Ben Banky takes the time out, and we can listen to that, but... Every possession matter, okay? Stay in the game. We have one close to keep. We cannot give up easy points, as we did. Play solid, spend the ball before the shot. You can see some advantage, okay? I mean, he's making that point that we've been making every possession counts because of the, the way the tournament works. Yep. But if you look at what we said, we find out some answers about Canada. Well, they weren't as good as they've been defensively to start with. Latvia really built the 10 point lead. They have lifted their defensive pressure and that's forced Latvia that bit further away. And they've just stayed with that relentlessly. They have worn down a very good Latvian team. And, you know, you could argue they've gone to the World 1 too many times Latvia because they've had to dig in and beat France. And you've got to take your hat off to them, etc., etc. But as soon as one of the parts doesn't quite work, Bertrand's not making shots, Canada have had so many opportunities to get going in transition and play off their defense. Their defense has been exceptional again. Second half, second quarter onwards, just an exceptional performance. Well, they had a slow start, but they've woken up here in the second half, Canada. And nice seal. Oh, maybe he should have just gone up is Couric for that shot. But again, how hard did they have to work yeah. to make the pass, to get the read that are at speed, and it just takes them out of their tempo. Oh, that one was well off. It would have brought the crowd to their feet for sure. RJ Barrett now, three-point shot is good. Near the end of the shot clock. And there you see the captain, Dyrus Bathmans. We know he's not gonna be able to play the rest of the tournament. Unfortunately, he has re-aggravated a hamstring injury. Lou Dort out for Canada, three-point shot in the corner. And that one somehow goes in as we see some substitutions that can be made because there's a minute 22 in the game. Um, so Canada missing Lou Dort. Canada with a slow, I'm gonna say they had a slow 20 minutes. Okay, maybe the last three minutes of the second quarter was better. Yeah, the but defense was better, yeah. Same thing, so it's kind of what they did against France as well. 
you can't start slow in tournaments like this if you want to beat some of the best teams in the world moving forward. And I think that's going to be a good learning experience for Canada. Remember those first three, four possessions for Latvia? They knew the scouting report. Coach had to call a timeout as RJ Barrett knocks down his second three-pointer in about 35 seconds. You have to be ready to play as soon as the ball is tipped. It doesn't matter who you're facing. You have to follow the scouting report. Grajulis, Bertrands, finally. It's all too late now, but it probably has a point. His arm was hit after he released the ball, but. Oh, we see some substitutions from both teams as the big Young and the Boilermaker from Purdue. Well, he's from Canada, but plays at <laughs> the University of Purdue. Temporarily. Temporarily, yeah. Uh, probably only for one more year is Zach Eady, number 15, Alexander Walker. No good. There he is, already on the board. Well, the fans are still proud of everything this Latvian team has done. And it's not over. They know that too, it's Trelp, Trey Bell Haynes checking in for Canada, almost loses it. Does lose it. Nope, it's gonna stay white ball. He's gotta be careful. He's starting to, uh, I think, talk a little bit too Go much, exaggerate, yeah, exaggerate a little bit too much. He's in that I know place. he's frustrated, yeah, but. Yeah. And I, you know, I think the officials are like, yeah, he's frustrated. As long as he doesn't do anything too crazy, let's just let him go, but. There comes a point. Well, shot clock, game clock, about the same as Bell Haynes says, hold on. Alexander just in the game. <laughs> this is how good this Canada team is. He just checked in and knocks down a three. Well, another big win for Canada as they knock off Latvia 101 to 75. And this score is not indicative of how exciting the game really was for a good 25 minutes of play, I would say. At least. 25. At least the first half, maybe a little bit more. Latvia, people need to start respecting this Latvian team and realize that they are for real because they are very, very good. I think this was a good test for Canada. Latvia led for about 19 and a half minutes almost in that second half. Canada hadn't experienced that and you saw them get a little shaky in the first half, especially offensively. They made some mistakes. Coach Fernandez had to call a quick timeout and, and get mad at them. Basically say, guys, this is not what we planned. This was not our scouting report and you know, they talked about getting better every day because they haven't been together long. Today, maybe a little bit of a dip in concentration to start the game, but they sure found their rhythm after halftime as they come up with a big win over Latvia. No, let's not forget, Latvia led by 11. You know, they had a double-digit lead, making enough shots. It's Canada leave the gate, leave the floor. We're gonna get a look at the stats in a moment. Love the fact this crowd is still here. They're still doing everything for this team. 28% from the three-point line. And they're not going to win because of the way they play. They're not going to win. 44 to 31 on the glass was the other area where they got really dominated by Canada. Gilles Alexander just had a super second half. RJ Barrett had his best game of the tournament so far. And we all, as we said in previous games, it was going to come to him. They were going to find him. He was going to make shots. He just had to have the patience which uh, he had, and Coach Fernandez had the confidence in him to stay with him. Latvia leave the floor, they can't be too disappointed. They're gonna go to the round of 16. Absolutely, I don't think you can be disappointed. This is their first World Cup ever. We didn't even talk about that. They already have two wins. History making, yep. this team is. They are gonna go down in basketball history in Latvia. Let's not forget, years from now, people are gonna know these men's names and Coach Luca Bank. Benke and his staff, they're moving on. Oh yeah, and they're not done, obviously. Two they're games, not done. 
game against Spain and a game against uh, Brazil, all the Ivory Coast to come. And you track it right back to Luka Banki's technical foul. At that point, they still led by five. And that point on, it was all about Canada, the end of the first half and all of the second half, except for that run that Latvia had, which yeah. got it back to a single digit game or a one point game at that point. And with all their depleted resources, everybody needed to show, and it just wouldn't work for Bertrand. He really yeah. did. It really did not go his way. Only made the one three deep in the fourth quarter. Maybe a little bit too late, but you have to give credit to Canada. They took away yeah. the three-point shooting, and that's what Latvia is known for. And I thought Canada defended it very well, especially in the second half. And and, well, and taking the ball that bit further yeah. out, it just stopped. Because they had to chase them a bit in the first half. And once they chased them, Latvia are going to make good reads. Well, yeah. so this is a challenge, the challenge of taking Latvia. The challenges now get tougher in the second round for Canada. Yep. It's going to be Spain and Brazil or Ivory Coast. And you know, it's going to take them longer. Tremendous performance by Canada. They've answered a lot of questions. They've answered a lot of questions. And we know Canada are moving on as they will finish first in the pool at a 3-0 with this win over Latvia tonight. France getting their first win of the tournament. They are 1-2, Latvia in 2-1. So the two teams moving on. They're going to have to wait and see who finishes second and third. We know Spain are going. Thank you for joining in and good night.